Hi there, it's Mark Wickersham and I've got an incredible story for you. This is Jane Elwin who is the most incredible bookkeeper I've ever come across. Uh, she's completely transformed her results from her business in the last few months and I'm delighted to have Jane here. We're going to dig deep to find out what she's done, how she's done it so you can learn from it and start to build a more successful, more profitable bookkeeping or accounting business. Uh, so Jane, can you uh, start by just giving us a little bit of, of, of background about you, uh, what you do, how long you've been in business, the size of your business and so on? Yeah, absolutely and thank you, what an introduction. Um, I have a practice of five people based on the south coast in the UK. Um, I started working for myself in 2004 just on the kitchen table, bookkeeping as a sole trader. Um, and then just a few years ago I decided to stop just earning a living out of this and actually build a business. And I had no idea how hard that would be. I, I thought I was quite good at business, um, and it turns out that I had an awful lot to learn. So it started off, um, I, I was always doing hourly billing, so um, that, was, that was fine when it was me. When I started employing different people, it became harder and harder. So, so about a year ago, I, I took a look at my business and I thought, I can't carry on like this, I need to do something. Um, and I came across you at a conference that I went to um, and, and yeah, I mean the re results have been amazing and things have changed so much. Yeah, so, uh, and they certainly have. So if you go back a year ago, how would you kind of describe uh, the, the, the pain, the problems that were going on in your life? Oh, I was, um, I mean as I say, one of my, my main issues was that I was, I was doing hourly billing. So all the time I, I was working and it was just me, that, that was okay because I knew how fast I worked and I, didn't, I did non-client work in my own time so I didn't need to pay myself for that. So, so it felt like I was doing all right and I was getting busier and busier and busier. So I, I took on staff um, and before I realised it I was working harder and harder and harder and I seemed to be earning less and less and less and, and my clients were less and less happy with the service that I was carrying out. And, it was very stressful um, and it wasn't what I was expecting for my business and I realised that nobody works as fast as I do and I couldn't justify charging on the hours that, that the staff were, were taking to do something because that hardly seemed fair on the client. Um, I was spending a lot of my time supporting the staff so not only was I paying them to do it but I was doing it as well and I still couldn't charge the extra time onto the client. Um, and, and all in all, it was extremely stressful and it was making me very, very unhappy. Um, and I really wasn't, I wasn't the success that I, I thought I would have with a bigger business. Yeah, and it's interesting to listen to Jane because as you were saying that, I'm thinking, that was me in 1998. <laughs> I was in exactly the same position. And I think many of us have been that, you know, we, we, we don't always do things the right way. We think we are, but when we look back, we work too hard for too little. And, and, and you so. You've made a lot of changes in the last uh, 12 months, particularly in the last six, but in the last 12 months. So could you describe uh, some of the things that you've done? So um, the first thing I've done is I've moved completely away from hourly pricing. Um, we don't price anything hourly anymore. And I've also moved away from fixed fee because all of my fixed fees, which I was very proud of, were always based on how many hours it would take me to do something, which, which was not it wasn't replicable in the business. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot about how to price, I've learned a lot about the value of what I do uh, and I now use value pricing and I use value pricing systems. I'm very systematic in my approach to sales meetings, I'm very systematic in my approach to the services that we offer um, and I've packaged those up now so that it's very easy for me to communicate to the staff what they need to do and it's very easy for them to follow um, and, and that's completely revolutionised certainly the, the prices I'm getting, the relationships I'm having with clients and, and really what I'm able to achieve in my business, it really has. And it would be great to kind of dig in, dig deep into some of the specific results and I know you said to me about six months ago you had what you call your week of wow and that's where things really started to change. Uh, tell me about how that week went. It was about five months ago um, and, and I, had, I, I very much had a change in mindset and I'd started working on putting my packages together and I'd done a lot of work with, um, with the cloud pricing software and I was on my way to a client meeting and it was six o'clock at night and it was winter and it was cold and it was raining and I'd much rather have been at home um, with my family but it was the only time they could do. They weren't paying enough, they hadn't paid enough for years, they were very high maintenance clients but I happened to like them. Um, so, so I still had these, this particular client. 
And on my way to the meeting, I had my iPad with me. I had I had um, the, the document that will become my brochures, and I. I thought, I'm just going to do it, I'm just going to do this. Because actually, what does it matter if I lose this client? You know, I'm on my way to a meeting, I'm not happy, I'm not looking forward to it, the relationship's not good. Um, and an hour and a half later, I left the client's house and I had a 150% increase in the client's fee. Now the client finally understood what it was I did for them. Um, they understood how I could help them. I was able to have a conversation with that client about why they were high maintenance and, and you know, what, what our pain points with them were and how we could help them. Um, and it was amazing. And I, I left happy. It was you know, by then half seven at night and I still wasn't at home, but I left happy and I had a better relationship with the client. So that week I decided that every meeting I had, and I had four meetings booked, um, I would do the same. And I would see what happened. I had four meetings with four existing clients in five days and I added 12% to my turnover um, for actually no extra work, just by better explaining what it was that I did and you know, demonstrating that there was value to what I did and that this was the price. And actually that that price wasn't really negotiable. Although we could, we could talk about the packages and we can talk about what level they want, the price itself was non-negotiable. This is now what we charge for this service. And it was amazing. It really was amazing. Yeah, it's a, a staggering result because, I mean, to put it into context, uh, and, and you're an established business, it's not a new startup, yep. and for most, based on my research and benchmarking, most accounting and bookkeeping firms, uh, most don't grow by 12% every single year consistently, year in, year out. It's, it's less than that. Uh, a few manage to grow more than 12%, but that's, that's, that would be a good result. You did 12% in one week <laughs> for an established business. And that all came from existing clients and from changing the way that you price. Yep. Um, whereas most people think, okay, I want to grow my business, I need more clients, get me more clients. Yep. But you've taken a different approach and focused on existing clients and, and doing things differently. Uh, tell me a bit more about, because um, you had four clients that week, tell me a bit about how some of those other meetings went and, and kind of some of the, um, how those meetings went. What, what did you do exactly? Uh, well, I've completely changed my approach to sales meetings. Now, I have to admit that once upon a time, I was a total coward when it came to sales. I hated it. You know, I, I was a technician, not a salesperson, um, but obviously I had to I had to get sales. So I used to go to arrange a meeting, probably over the internet or over the phone, not really ask any questions, go to the client's office, have a look around, think, well, how much money have they got? Um, have a look at their accounts to see what they'd, they'd paid before. And then I'd go away because when they asked me what the price was, I'd say, well, I'll have to go and think about it, but I'll send you a detailed quotation so, so you know what, what it is. And I'd write something completely meaningless, which was pages and pages and pages with a price at the bottom. Um, and if the client never phoned me, I was too cowardly to follow it up in case they said, well, you're too expensive. Because then they'd say, well, what's that based on? And I'd have to, I didn't know. I, sometimes I got it right, but it was once in a blue moon, but I didn't really know why I was getting it wrong. So now what I do is I have my system, um, I have my packages and I have my software and I speak to the client and I say you're going to need probably three hours for us to, to really do this right. And I spend those three hours really building rapport with, with the prospect, um, if this is a, a new prospect who I don't know, and really getting to know them and just asking them to tell me about their business. And um, what I've discovered is from my own experience being a business owner is quite a lonely um, place to be and the opportunity to talk, it, talk about it to somebody who understands, who is sympathetic and who is ultimately there to try and help you, which is the whole purpose of, of the meeting, is really, really powerful. So we go through the meeting, we probably spend two hours um, and I just listen, I ask a few questions, I agree in all the places and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite an honest person so if they say something that resonates then I'll say, oh yes, I really know what you mean. Um, and then we'll do the pricing. So we, we do the pricing together. Uh, I take my system with me and I go through it with, with the client. So I did this not long ago uh, with a prospect which I think probably nine months ago I would probably have charged about £4,000 um, for, for what I was, was quoting. Now I walked away from that meeting with a, a, an annual retained fee of £13,000, which is just incredible. I mean, it really is. And I've only been working with them for two months but already the relationship is fantastic because I took the time to get to know him um, and because the way I've priced it and the way I've quoted it and the way I, I sent through my fixed price agreement the scope's already changed because I priced this job with that client 
if I say to him, oh, right, we need to talk about that, he says, I know this wasn't what we first discussed, but I think we need to do it. So uh, there's no awkwardness, there's no uncomfortableness, there's no need for me to be a coward, um, and the result is just amazing, it's fantastic. That is incredible. So it was a, you would have charged 4,000, you got 13,000. Yeah. And uh, something you said back then that I thought was interesting is that you, you, you now tell the prospects or the clients that they need to allow a couple of hours, to, yeah. two, three hours for the meeting. Uh, and, and interesting for a couple of reasons. I, was, I saw a post, someone sent me a message by I think Facebook the other day saying, Mark, this value pricing stuff, it just seems to take a long time to go through the process and come up with the price. Yes, it does, <laughs> but you can see the results. I mean, how would you argue that if someone said that's, that's a long time to spend? Um, well, I don't think it is, because if I had been going about it in the old way, I'd have driven down to wherever it was. I probably would have been there for about half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. I'd have driven away again. I'd then have spent two weeks thinking about the price. I'd then have had to put a bespoke quote together, which I'd have had to make up because I didn't have anything you know, to, to really base it on. Then I'd have emailed the quote, or posted it, probably emailed, and then I'd have waited two to three weeks before I'd given up on getting the job. So although the whole process was three hours, at the end of that three hours, we'd agreed a price. I had a fixed price agreement ready and drawn up. Uh, because of some of the, the software integrations we're using, um, such as practice ignition, the fixed price agreement, the letter of engagement, is all done instantaneously. So. Although the whole process is probably, for that particular quote, four hours, I don't think that's a long time in comparison to what I was going through every time I did a quote for somebody. I, I agree. And, and even, even more important, I mean, how long do you expect to keep a typical client? How many years? I've had some of my clients since 2004. So, I mean, if I was to keep this client, and there's no reason why I shouldn't for 10 years. 10 years. So... The difference the is, is value. you could price things the old way and get 10 years of a 4,000 fee, yeah. or you could do it the new way and get 10 years of 13,000. Well, the difference between 40,000 and 130,000, if I've got my maths right, is about 90,000 pounds. Isn't that worth doing it properly and make sure you have a proper meeting, go through a structured process, build up the value, uh, and, and to get the right price would, would be my suggestion. Um, another co so I, I had that. It was interesting when you said that point. I had that comment on Facebook. Someone said, "Oh, this takes a long time. This value pricing process." Yes, it does. But if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Uh, and and the other the other objection I sometimes get is, "Yeah, but Mark, my clients don't want to spend more than 20, 30 meeting m minutes in a meeting, and yet you're doing three hours. Uh, how would you respond to that?" Let them know, but, but tell them why. Explain to them the benefits. Again, this is the, the whole system it works together. So when you speak to the client about coming to meet with them, you just say, I'm going to need three hours because every business is unique. Your requirements are going to be different to anybody else I've ever met with. And in order to, to fully understand what it is you need from me and to get the price right, I need, I need to know as much about you as possible. Now, the right sort of client is going to go, well, that's amazing. I, you know, this is what I want. Because we're still at quoting stage. They can still say no. There's, there's still no obligation at that point. But they understand that I am giving them every single opportunity to make sure that they can get the most out of the service that I'm offering them. Brilliant. And one thing I think you touched on earlier but I'd like to explore a bit more is you say that as part of your system, your structure, when you come to the price, uh, I know you use cloud pricing, a structured software process. So why do you use cloud pricing? Uh, how do you use it? And what sort of results does that get you? Um, I use it because it's a fabulous system. I use it because it offers total consistency in my pricing um, and, and transparency as well because when you, when you sit with a client or a prospect and you build the price together, there is total transparency in that. Um, when the price comes out, if it's too high, you can go back and you can say, OK, well, let's have a look at your answers to these questions. Let's have a look at some of the things you wanted. And we can change them. So it gives you the opportunity to, to be consistent and transparent, which are really key to me, really key. But also, the chances of, of winning that client, winning that business, are increased exponentially because A, you've got the facility to adjust the price without just giving spurious discounts. B, 
you get three options, so you give the client a choice then and there. So they've already got a choice. They don't need another choice. They don't need to go anywhere else because they, they can choose between what you're offering them, which I think is really powerful. Um, but finally, because the main thing for me is, is I used to suffer so badly from scope creep. You know, I, I'd start off doing something, and four years later, I suddenly realised that their business was... 25 staff instead of one, you know, two shops, and, and it was ridiculous, whereas now everything is documented. So, so that's why I use it. Um, it. It's so useful. I always do it in front of the client, I always do it face to face. Um, I have had one web meeting where the client was too far away, and it, it does work really, really well, but it's just nice to have that actual interaction. So I always use it with the client. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, what was your final question? I've got I think they probably right. answered actually. Okay. I think, I think <laughs> I if not, I'll come back to it. Uh, you talked about five months ago your week of wow, which yes. is absolutely amazing. But I know that's not the end of the story because just before we turned the camera on, uh, you said that you'd had just the other day you got your biggest ever uh, client. How did that come about? What was how did, how did that work? And uh, again, it was really just through. It was a referral, um, but it was really just through making absolutely certain that I, I understood what the client wanted and really communicated the value. So with the use of the brochure idea, with the use of the software, I now, I, I really identify everything that we do. Um, and whereas once upon a time, I just would have said, oh, do you bookkeeping? It doesn't really mean anything. And bookkeeping is, is you know, rightly or wrongly, and in, in my opinion, wrongly, considered quite a low value service. Um, I now demonstrate that it really, really, really isn't. And because we're, we're selling more and more and we're cross and we're upselling and everything we talk about generates a conversation about something else and our services are suddenly separate, then all of a sudden the fees are getting higher. So, so the, the story I just told about getting that £13,000 fee, it would have been £4,000. That was my biggest ever single fee generated in, in one meeting. But it was because I really explained the scope of what we do. Mm. And uh, I know we've touched on the software. Uh, you, you talk about this, the system and the, the, the brochure, the, the song. Tell me, um, give me one or two thoughts, ideas, and, and for people watching, what's in that brochure that helps you to get that fee? What's in that brochure that helps me get that fee is, first of all, um, it, it keeps me on track. It's my narrative, so that when I have a meeting, I know I don't miss anything out. So. Um, it starts off talking about the pain of whatever service it is. So, for example, bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, bookkeeping is a pain. Um, if you're a business owner, you spend your evenings and your weekends doing your bookkeeping rather than playing golf or being with your family or whatever it is. So the brochure explains this. So I can talk about it and you, and you can have an anecdotal conversation because it's been sparked by what's in there. Um, it then talks about the things which we do. So there's uh, the... T the t uh, three choices in there, so we have three levels now for every service, so we have an entry level, a um, full level and an advanced level, and it shows that table, it shows what's in there, but then it explains every single item. So when I'm talking about what we do, I don't forget anything, it's all in there. Um, the other thing which is so powerful about them is that you can leave them with the client, so that even after you've gone, mm. there's a reminder, you know, and, and they yep. can look through it and think, I had no idea that's what was involved. Um, so powerful. Yep, makes so much sense. Uh, amazing. Uh, so you've you've done lots of stuff, a huge amount of stuff, got great results. Uh, if you were to just kind of summarise with, you know, what's been the overall result for you over the last five months or so? Um, the last five months, which which is really when I, although I've been I've been working with you for a year, it's only really been five months that I've really started to put this in practice. Um, so from my week of wow uh, till now, I have increased my turnover by just under 40% in total on my last financial year, which is incredible yeah. in five months. I mean, it really is. Um, so I've added in, and this is just in monthly retained bookkeeping, payroll and reporting fees. It doesn't include any cloud setup. It doesn't include any tax returns. It doesn't include any, any of the, the sort of one-off services. Okay. It's only retained work. Um, so I've added 53,000, just short of 53,000 pounds to my turnover in five months, wow. which is incredible. Um, and most of that goes straight to the bottom line, it, you know, because it's, it's, it's 
it's a shift in pricing and it's a shift in perception rather than a huge uplift in number of clients. Uh, so it's it really is incredible. Yeah, amazing. Now you, I know you're a member of the the ICB, the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers, and I'm guessing that there'll be many bookkeepers and ICB members watching this video and, and, and some accountants as well. If you could share with everybody perhaps your three top tips from what you've learned from everything you've done over the last year. Um, my, my absolute top tip is, um, well, A, work with, with Mark, to because to, you know, learning about value pricing is so, so key and important. But really, when you start to understand it, just get on and do it. Don't wait for it to be perfect because it will never be perfect. And if you wait for it to be perfect, all you're doing is throwing money away. You're just letting people not pay you enough for what you do for longer and longer and longer. It will get harder and harder and harder. So just do it. Um, tip number two, never compromise on price. Change the service, discuss with the client what you can do to, to make it more affordable for them. But never just say, oh, I'll give you a 10% discount. Never compromise on price because you cannot compromise on price without compromising on quality. And I think that, that is so, so key. And I think we all miss that. We try and do things cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, but we're doing people a disservice, ourselves and our clients. You cannot provide a good service at a cheap price. It's just not possible. Um, and my final tip is, Whatever process you decide to use, you know, really do use it. Stick with it, measure it, systemize it, and, and monitor your results. Before, I had no idea where I was getting things wrong. I knew I was getting them wrong. I was getting them wrong virtually every single time. But I had no idea why, because I had no system. So, so now, even if I have a meeting and, and the price that comes up, I think, well, that, that's not right. I can look at it and I can decide why, and I can decide why for that particular client, what's different. That, that made me need to adjust that so I can manage it, I can monitor it, and I can continuously approve, improve my systems. Um, so yeah, just do it, don't compromise on price, and use a system and really stick with it. Wow, Th three really powerful tips and amazing stories, so thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. And, and so what, what should you do next? Well, if you want to replicate what Jane's been getting as results, then Somewhere below this video, you'll find some details of, of what you can do next, and there'll be a link there. Go and click on that, and it would be great to have the, the opportunity to work with you and help you get those same sorts of results. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.